Let me share my screen and we can get started. Okay. Um, so this is the public speaking slash debate class, uh, day one. Let's see. Okay, so uh, a brief introduction to this class. This class is just gonna be like a baseline introductory class uh, about how like public speaking and mainly just making arguments. Uh, the primary form of debate that we'll be teaching you is LD debate, which is typically um, one versus one. It heavily focuses on framework and values, uh, value by value by uh, value value criterion, which I'll be going on to uh, later. Um, and as a quick introduction, this is um, this is a video clip. That thing is. Okay, so this is so this is kind of a representation of um, what we really wanted to teach about uh, in this class, especially with the I think uh, a large part of our lesson is going to be focused on uh, the, uh, for example, uh, our topic is going to be about Oh wait, sorry, there wasn't any sound. Um, <laughs> okay, um, it's fine, I guess. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to share sound, but. Let me see. Uh, yeah, I guess I can turn on captions. Actually, that's a good idea. Let's see what it is. Yeah. I just realized how awkward this one is without any context of the of the sound. Okay, so this is this is kind of what we what we really wanted to uh, talk about as like the political and economic uh, state of the world right now. Um, you definitely won't be like this guy by the end of this class, but it will definitely be a slap in the face when you talk about with your friends about uh, things like gun control, things like the Russia-Ukraine uh, Russia war. Um, anyways, so also for those who are like feuding with their parents, this is good for uh, like argumentative, creating logical and sound arguments. Um, and it also just basically help you in argumentation. I found that public speaking is really good um, in just every part of your life. Um, so just introduction. Uh, I don't know if we will be doing this for everyone, but I guess the people who really want to, they can introduce themselves since we have, do have a lot of people in here. Okay, so, um, so name. So I'm Harvey. I'm going into 12th grade. Um, I'm not sure where everyone is from, but, uh, but I live in Sugarland. Um, and the school I go to is Straight Jesuit, which is really good for debate. I've been debating since uh, sixth grade, um, but it wasn't really like debate. It was mainly like public speaking and I went to, went to debate. Uh, favorite show uh, would be Moon Knight. I think it's really good about uh, like things like uh, mental conditions and things like that. Um, Aiden can go. Well, hi everyone, my name is Aiden. Wait, Aiden, uh, your audio is very- Really bad, bad. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's good. It's good now, good now. Oh, okay. Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Aiden Zhu. I'm in 11th grade and I go to Dulles High School. Um, I live in Missouri City and have lived here my entire life. I started debate back in seventh grade and have debated all throughout high school so far. And I've had varying amounts of success since I made it to both the state and national levels for two years in a row. Um, my favorite anime, I guess, I'm a big anime guy, is One Piece. I've been watching it for a really, really long time now, and I still keep up with it to this day. Okay. Okay. Nice. Um, I guess we won't we won't do introductions. This is just so you know us and feel more comfortable uh, talking about it. But we'll be going into the actual lecture kind of stuff. So the topic that we decided here is the United States ought to have stricter gun control. Um, Aiden, if you have like a general topic analysis on what this means. Um. Yeah. Okay. So basically, I'm oh, sure yeah, everyone... yeah, oh, hello. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I, I guess it, I guess I just should wait a little second before um, starting to speak. Okay, yeah. So um, basically, as I'm sure everyone has heard so far in the news, there's been a really, really large influx of um, 
a lot of school shootings in particular. Um, I know just recently there was a school shooting at an elementary school. And for those of you guys who live at, uh, in Texas, like Harvey and I do, it was pretty big and it was, uh, it became a really, really major thing. Um, and so the reason why we chose this topic today was because it does pertain largely to the political sphere that we're talking about right now, with a lot of Democrats wanting more stricter gun controls, like the topic states, and a lot of Republicans leaning towards the other side, wanting to um, have a little bit more gun freedom and having no restrictions upholding strictly the Second Amendment. And so the topic that we're arguing today is various gun controls. We're leaving it really, really open to interpretation for the drill that's coming up later. But it basically just means that um, right now, we we believe that the United States should or should not, depending on what side you choose, um, have stricter gun control laws in order to make sure that it is harder for everyone to get guns um, and it is it becomes a more safer environment for those who are afraid of guns. Um, and gun controls can span from everything. We have a couple examples listed later on in the PowerPoint, but for now, just a quick um, brief, to brief topics are um, some schools are proposing clear backpacks so you can see if guns are in the backpacks or things like uh, stricter background checks for unlicensed gun dealers who don't actually uh, have to follow the law and abide by these gun control laws. Um, and so basically, yeah, that's the topic we'll be um, going over today. And that's what we'll be st structuring a lot of our um, topic analysis and lecture on for today's uh, lecture. Okay, great. Um, so let's go into the case structure. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of references to like pop culture in this thing because we want to make it relatable. But anyways, uh, case structure. Uh, first is the uh, like resolution so resolution is pretty easy you either affirm or negate depending on what side you are um you say i affirm the resolution the united states also have stricter gun control laws um and or negate uh the definitions this is a pretty crucial point uh in a lot of debates especially for new debaters uh it's ve very important to have definitions when you are uh with lay judges which are basically parent judges or people who don't really understand the topic a lot uh, a secondary use of definitions is actually to squirrel out of uh, out of your opponent's things. For example, let's take the topic of gun control. If people define gun control things as uh, specifically clear backpacks or things like uh, uh, ID, it's uh, your opponent can basically just make it so that you, your offense or your arguments don't really apply to their case. So it's really important for not only you to have uh, definitions, but also for you to have counter definitions on the arguments that you don't really uh, know about. Uh, now, that's the probably the most important thing about LD debate is the framework. So the framework uh, includes the value uh, and the criterion or the standard. Uh, the value is some general principle you want to uphold. Things like morality, justice, we have more examples later, but those are basically what it is. Um, and criterion is how you measure it. So uh, it usually has a maximizing, uh, maximizing or like a, uh, a way to increase or decrease it. Things like maximizing well-being, it's just basically utilitarianism, which is doing the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. Um, that is the framework. And the framework is really important because it acts as the lens of the debate. It doesn't matter how many arguments you're winning on the contention levels or your advantages if you don't actually apply it to the framework um, because ultimately that's how we, how we want to view it. Uh, if things like maximizing lives uh, or uh, things like maximizing uh, the rights of people are often discussed um, and depending on how you uh, incorporate it into your framework uh, makes it so that you win the round. So framework is always just really important, especially for LD debate. PF debate, which is like 2v2, which is what Aiden does, um, doesn't really have it. But for LD debate, it's incredibly crucial. Onto contentions, we'll be going onto more of the structure of specific advantages, but this is basically the bread and butter of your case. Uh, the, your case depends on the strength of your advantages. If you have bad advantages, it's going to be worse to, uh, or it's going to be harder to win on them. Uh, solvency is basically, it's usually uh, a lot of people just have like, like has the resolution as their solvency, but a lot of good debaters will have actual uh, carded evidence on how they specifically solve. So for example, um, in this topic about stricter gun control, they will have this, this like a uh, professor that says uh, this certain policy and it will usually list out the how we specifically go against it. So solvency is basically how we solve for the current issue or how we solve for the resolution. And depending on how strong the solvency is can really help frame the debate because a lot of the questions that your opponent has or a lot of arguments that they have could have already been answered by solvency. And I think it's one of the most overlooked things in all the debate because ultimately solvency is just the best way you solve. Um, the underview is something a little bit more advanced. Uh, it usually has to do with uh, preempting your opponent's arguments. So as you gradually go up and higher and higher um, in levels of debate, you are going to understand your opponent's arguments more. And a lot of these debaters usually run a lot of the same things. So for example, if a debater always runs um, capitalism bad, so uh, a, lot of the a lot of these topics 
often include United States. And with United States, there often comes criticisms of the capitalism system. So a lot of debaters will always just run capitalism, capitalism, capitalism bad in every single case. Um, and having an underview there is really crucial because you can basically have carded evidence before your opponent even makes their speech, basically preempting what they say. And this will give you an extreme advantage over your opponent, um, as well as just save you a bunch of time. And um, just the general, also the general structure of the times. Uh, so the time goes six, three, seven, three, four, six, three. Um, six minutes for the affirmative case. Uh, this is usually includes like all the key structure that I said, and there's three minutes for your opponent to ask you questions. So as the affirmative, you're going to be defending your own case and trying to basically uh, uh, make it so that your opponent doesn't point out as many, as many weaknesses as they can. Next is the seven minutes negative case. Uh, so, so the negative case basically um, has around four minutes of attacking the opponents, uh, attacking your case. So they have their own arguments, they have their own type of like contention advantages. They generally do follow, this, follow the same framework. Um, so definitions, framework, uh, contention, solvency, underview. Um, and usually, and then they usually spend three minutes attacking your own case. And then for the next three minutes, uh, the affirmative is asking the negative case uh, questions. And we'll be going on to our own like CX drill, uh, I think tomorrow. But that's basically what it is. And then there's the four minute rebuttal. So this speech, the four minute, it's called the one AR. And it's the most difficult speech um, in the entire uh, debate because you have four minutes to effectively respond to a seven minute case, um, which is extremely difficult. So it's important, um, which, which is all I said this because it's really important to have this under view because it can save you on that four minutes of time. If you preempt your opponent's seven minutes case, if you, let's say you spend a minute and that gives you an extra advantage over your opponent. Um, after the four minute one AR, there's a six minute two NR. And basically it's the same thing. You basically refute, uh, you, you weigh, and then you defend your own case. Um, and the last one is the two minute, uh, is, sorry, three minute two AR. Uh, and that just concludes the speech, basically just giving the reasons why you, you win. Okay. Um, and now Aiden will go on to the argument structure. Yeah, okay, so for arguments, even if you aren't doing an actual debate form like LD or PF like Harvey and I do, um, you could you should still know that a basic argument consists of four key components, right? And that's the uniqueness, the link, the internal link, and the impact, right? And we'll be going on to like further depth on each of these in the further slides. Okay, yeah, so let's start with uniqueness, right? Uniqueness is basically what is happening in the status quo, and status quo is just another fancier way of saying the world. Um, it basically just defines like the, it, it, like it sets up the scenario for what's happening right now and what's currently happening. It also explains why your argument is needed. So if we take a look at, uh, if we take a look at gun control, for example, um, one uniqueness example could be the fact that there currently is not enough gun control right now to restrict things from ma like mass shootings from happening. And so that underlines the cause of why your argument is needed because it outlines the problem and it outlines what's currently happening with the world that you need to change in your argument. Right, your uniqueness should be solved by your link, and we'll get onto that later. But it basically just means that, like, you can't pose a problem with the world right now and then have your argument solve something that is completely unrelated or solve something that just doesn't handle the uniqueness as its own. Right, solving a problem that like you you pose but not being able to solve it fully is almost as bad as not being able to solve the problem at all. And so you need to make sure that when you when you list your uniqueness, it needs to be narrow enough for you to be able to address completely with your own argument. And last of all, your argument should basically center around why changing this uniqueness is either good or bad. So basically you wanna say whether or not you like the current world or you don't like the current world and your link should be addressing how you change that world. Um, yeah, all right, Harvey, next slide. Okay, so next up is the link, right? The link is basically relating your argument to the resolution or the topic, right? Resolution is just a fancy word for topic. Um, so in this case, the topic that we chose was the United States ought to use gun, a stricter gun control. Um, and so for that, it just means that you're going to be relating how your argument compares to your resolution. It's just going to be connecting the two and saying whatever, like what your plan of action for solving the resolution is going to be. Um, it should also address how your argument changes the uniqueness, because usually you want to either do one of two things. You want to A, uphold the uniqueness or uphold the status quo and say, yes, this is the current state of the world and we like it this way because if you change it, something bad is going to happen. Or B, we hate the current resolution, we hate the current topic, we hate the current uniqueness, and we want to do something about it, which is why we're making this argument in the first place and that's why we're going to be changing, right? 
And there can be multiple links within one argument. A link chain is a common term you hear in debate, and it basically just means a bunch of different connections from one step to another, right? Say you're trying to go from, um, like, I don't know, kicking a can down the street to something like nuke war, right? Obviously, you can't just make it in one step. You can't just be like, okay, if we kick the can, then Russia will get mad and there's going to be nuke war between, like, Ukraine and Russia, something like that, right? That doesn't work like that. You need a bunch of different steps in order to relate your topic to your impact. Um, and that's basically what links are there for, right? They're just basically there to ensure that you can make a step-by-step -step analysis of your plan in order to involve both solving the, uh, solving the uniqueness and addressing the resolution at the same time. Okay, so next up is the internal link, right? Um, so since the link relates your resolution to your argument, your internal link relates your argument to the impact. So it basically just addresses what your argument is going to lead or what your link is going to lead up to. And it basically just explains like why the link is good or it's bad or what like basically why your plan should or should not be enacted. Um, and there can be multiple in an argument just like previously. Um, and you, you can have like multiple internal links depending on A, whether or not you have multiple impacts or B, whether or not your impact scenario is just really, really complicated. But um, all in all, all you need to know is that it's just a way to like explain why your argument or why your link is going to be good or bad. Now, this step is actually really optional. You don't exactly need it. If your impact flows really, really well from your link, uh, you don't actually need a bridge between your link and your impact. You can go directly into your impact if you want to, but an internal link just helps create a better storyline for you. And most, if not every single argument you see will have some sort of internal link that shows why their plan is good or why their plan is bad. And lastly is probably the most important step, which is the impact, right? This basically just shows you why your argument is going to matter or what your accomplishment, uh, what your argument accomplishes or prevents, right? So. Um, like a typical impact you'll hear throughout debate or something like that is nuclear war, right? So you should have your argument be like, okay, either A, if we enact this plan, we prevent nuclear war, or B, like by like solving this plan or something, we can start a nuclear war if you're a fan of that. Most people don't really go for that path, but you usually want to like, the point is you usually want to have something that you say is the end goal of your impact, uh, is the end goal of your argument. And that is exactly why your argument is created, right? It's to accomplish that end goal, that impact at the end of the day, right? It's also why your argument matters or why the audience cares, right? Just saying that there's going to be like a war between Russia and Ukraine doesn't really matter unless you show them why the war is bad. Unless you say, oh, there's going to be a hundred thousand deaths dying or saying like mass shootings aren't really bad unless you give like a, a specific example of like, or, or a specific as to why it is bad. Like, oh, people are going to die, right? If the, uh, if like the audience doesn't understand the argument that you're making and it doesn't understand like what this argument could potentially lead to, it makes no sense for them to believe hey we should do something about this until you show them that this is really really bad like for example it's been uh, it's been almost like it's been less than half of the year so far and there's already been more than 200 mass shootings across america thousands of lives have been lost already to these kinds of mass shootings to these school shootings that's an impact right that shows you why this argument matters that shows you why there's a need to cause change right now in the status quo um and lastly there can be or we go back a little bit. Yeah, lastly, there can be multiple within one argument, right? So, um, like, for example, if you're going to say, like, the Russia-Ukraine war, um, you could be like, well, number one, it leads to a nuclear war that's going to cause a lot of people to die. But number two, it's also going to cause an economic collapse, right? Because if Russia and Ukraine fight, then Russia is going to stop selling oil to all of Ukraine's allies, like America. And as we're seeing right now, like, the gas prices are going up. I'm sure your parents have been complaining about that. And um, yes, it is a picture of Genshin Impact because, you know, it's an impact. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it's got a lot of pop culture references, right? So yeah, but there can be multiple in an argument because every argument has like multiple reasons for why it's bad or why it's good. And like, it's up to you whether or not you want to include all of them. You kind of have to use your own judgment on whether or not you, you want to include this or whether or not you think this is worth talking about. Um, and so that's why like, most of the time, if you hear protesters, they'll only be talking about like one really bad thing just to get their message across. But in reality, there are like really, really bad things like climate change. People talk about like how, oh, the crops are going to die, right? But there's also things like natural disaster and stuff like that. Uh, and there just are multiple impacts. It just comes down to you on whether or not what, which impact you want to talk about and which one you think is the most important. Um, and this can also fit in with your value and criterion, depending on what that is. So like certain impacts can be more relevant to what you're talking about, and you might want to choose it because of that. Um, but yeah, uh, it just ultimately comes down to your own personal preference on which impact you want to choose.
Okay, so let's take an example, right? Um, again, our topic is going to be that the United States ought to have stricter gun control regulations. Um, for example, let's take the value of morality and the criterion that we'll be using to evaluate our value is going to be maximizing well-being. So basically, we're just going to be prioritizing the side that maximizes the well, uh, well-being the most in order to uphold morality. Um, so the uniqueness for this, or again, is what is happening currently, is that right now there are no background checks conducted by unlicensed sellers in the United States. Now, because the topic is only stricter gun control regulations, we chose to do a smaller subset of this, which was background checks, right, um, for unlicensed sellers. Um, you don't have to do this. You can just choose your own argument, and that's all about debate, right? Choosing the arguments that you fit most with or choosing the arguments that you think will win you the round the best. And so for this specific example, we chose the issue of the fact that there are no background checks conducted by unlicensed sellers right now. Um, so the link is, or the reason why, like the, the link between the topic and our argument is going to be that background checks prevent people with felony convictions, domestic abuse restraining orders, and others with criminal background records from obtaining firearms. Um, and so this is basically just like why the uh, like why enacting our plan matters, right? Like what specifically our plan does and why it is really, really important to do so, right? We say that enacting like these stricter background checks for unlicensed gun sellers means that these kinds of like dangerous people, these kinds of like um, felon or ex-felons potentially, or even people with those who have have like previous histories with criminal um like criminal backgrounds um aren't able to obtain these kinds of firearms and therefore aren't able to conduct these kinds of school shootings or mass shootings that we're hearing about on the news the internal link is going to be that without firearms, people are unable to conduct, ma uh, conduct mass shootings, right? That just explains the, uh, the connection between the link and the impact, right? It basically says that, okay, if we enact this plan that is our link, then what happens to the impact? Well, without like uh, without these kinds of gun regulations, we're seeing right now, there are a lot of like mass shootings or a lot of school shootings, but with our plan, with our link, so that they can prevent people from getting like uh, getting firearms that shouldn't have these firearms, we're able to prevent these kinds of mass shootings. And that's all that the inter internal link does. And the impact is that mass shootings kill thousands every year, right? We've already seen almost 200, uh, like more than 200 uh, mass shootings so far in this year and it's been less than 150 days into the year and we're already seeing thousands of people die every single year from these mass shootings and the problem's only growing worse and worse and so that's going to be our impact that's going to explain why like this specific topic is so bad and why we need to address it right now yeah it's also important um that for example this is just like an example all these arguments that that you're seeing right now are basically like the taglines of what uh, evidence should back up. So for each one of these, uh, for specifically uniqueness, link, internal link, and impact, you have to have evidence uh, like along with it. You can't just like say these things and just assume that they're true. Um, for example, things like mass treating uh, kills thousands per year, you're definitely going to have try to have evidence, but it's important to know that this is just like uh, when you're trying to research arguments, this is basically what you're trying to plan out before. So you you, you see these, you see these like uh, background, you see this, like these problems such as uh, like mass shootings happen and uh, you try to create solutions. Um, and while you're creating solutions, it's important to have all these like, internal links planned out. So it's just easier when you guys find evidence and actually uh, research them. Also a key point here is that the internal links I feel like are very uh, underestimated, um, especially with, for example, for this uh, example, another internal link could be like um, the people who have, who have already committed these mass shootings historically have been shown to have felony convictions, have domestic abuse restraining orders and with criminal backgrounds. So that just provides even greater evidence. And just like, it sounds more convincing when you have like not only empirical evidence, but also just like um, a solvency about background checks. So uh, with that, we're going to go on to our drill. Um, so we're going to use the same topic about um, having stricter gun control regulations. And we want you guys to make your own uh, like framework, uniqueness, link, internal links. I mean, technically internal links are, are like, uh, like if it's uh, are optional, but we want to have it for you since, since it's just like more convincing um, and also the impact. So uh, some possible links for to use if you guys want. You can obviously think of your own uh, possible solutions to uh, like mass shootings. But uh, for example, one is mandatory mental health programs. A lot of these uh, shooters have been historically shown to be suffering from some kind of mental uh, disability. Second is the implementing metal detectors at schools to prevent um, people with just guns from going in. Uh, three, giving teachers firearms. This one, a lot of these, by the way, were like testing you. A lot of these are definitely not good. Uh, good, good or like have some logical flaw with them, but it's up to you guys own to like convince us. Um, and uh, so four is station more police officers on campus, 
five is mandatory gun training programs. Um, six is licensing to carry uh, near schools. Seven is no, uh, no concealed firearms. And eight is banning all guns. There obviously are more that you guys want, uh, that you guys can make. Um, and these are possible frameworks. Again, you don't have to use them. Uh, just make sure you, you follow the general, like, um, like the way that they're kind of formed. So values, things like morality, uh, justice, specifically for like, let's say like the right to own handguns. By the way, it's also important to note that we're not specifically saying one side or another. I don't know if you should debate the other side, um, but I mean, you can, that's obviously a part of debate is you have to know both sides. Um, that's part of the why I find it so interesting. A lot of these topics, you have to find both sides. So um, of course you're open to having both sides. No one will really judge you. I think we'll, but yeah. Um, and then things like liberty, education, life can all be linked within school. Uh, criterion or basically how you measure your value Things like maximizing lives, minimizing deaths, maximizing well-being um, are all examples. So I think we're going to give you guys around uh, 10 minutes uh, to do this. Um, and then you guys can just message us personally, either one of us, when you're done. Actually, uh, and then we can uh, like and we will do another activity afterwards. Yeah, Harvey, show the frameworks again really quickly. The, uh, do you want to see the examples for the value and criterion, or do you want to just see the, um, the general slide explaining what they are? Okay, yeah, so we'll just leave it here for now. If anyone else wants to see any other slides, just feel free to say it out loud, or just type it in the chat, and we'll move accordingly. Oh, um, yeah. Do you want to see like the example argument structure really quickly? Yeah, Harvey, just move back, I think, two slides really quick. This one? All right, I'll take that as a yes. All right, perfect. Uh, no, debate is not the same thing as speech. So in the debate, uh, category itself, there's a lot of different events, but there's also speech events like, um, I don't really do speech, but there's a lot of things like, like, uh, like prose, I think is one of them. Um, and then there's like, like, there's like storytelling, some type of, some type of stuff like that. But um, it is, it's definitely not the same. There's, there's um, a lot of the speech events are, are individual. So it's not, it's just like you, it's like a competition uh, while debate is kind of just like against each other. Uh, yeah, the, the topic is on top, for example. Yeah, okay, I'll just elaborate a little more. So, um, okay, on the high school level, yeah, there are like two different kinds of events. Um, most people like, like for Dulles, at least we have a speech and debate club where we kind of combine the two, but the actual events are really, really different, right? Um, speech is primarily convincing a judge on like your stance. Whereas like debate is convincing why your stance is better than the opponent's stance. Um, and so like there, there are other forms of speech um, and speech is typically a little more diverse than debate is. So you have things like humorous interp, which are designed to be more funny, but also like supposed to hold a deeper message in it. Impromptu, which really, really focuses on um, like impromptu speaking or like being able to say things on the fly. You're only given like a couple minutes and then you have to like give like a, I think a couple minutes speech on how long it is. Exempt where you can 
can do a little bit longer kind of research, but it does a really good mix between um, like research kinds of speeches and um, impromptu kind of speaking. Um, and then on the other hand, you have debate, which really covers like a like a much more narrow scope of like what kind of arguments you'll be having um, for public forum, which is the, the debate that I do. We do a partner kind of debate. Um, and so that just means it's 2v2. You have a partner and that you guys all rotate speaking. And we, we, we typically like to address things like current topics. Um, and then for LD, you have other things like LD is typically a little more advanced right now. This is only like a really, really preliminary introduction to LD, but you have things that where you talk about like morality, where you have to, uh, topics on different ideologies on like debate itself, whether or not like certain norms are good in debate or bad in debate. And so it ultimately just comes down to like what kind of thing best suits you. If you like debating against someone else, if you like the clash of ideas and exchanging like different pieces of evidence and information, then you want to choose something like debate. But if you just want to like speak and like focus on like your presentational speaking skills or like just convincing other people without anyone else there to like prove you wrong then um public speaking is better for you um okay so in a debate round um harvey already gave like the order for speaking but in addition to that there's also like preparation time so typically like what we have are okay there there's two ways in which like that can be interpreted right the first is um prep time i guess and that's just within a round you have like a couple minutes it varies on which kind of debate you do but you have a couple minutes uh like that you can take at any point in the middle of a round other than like during someone's speech um where you can just like pause and like just do your own research really quickly if you want or like organize your own cases organize your speech docs for like the next round or something like that um but in addition to that we also have like debate tournaments which take place on saturday and sunday and like friday and that's like typically when people can be uh compete but like Every single topic is usually released at least a month in advance. So you have that entire month plus every single other day of the week prior to like those Friday, Saturday, and Sundays where you have debate tournaments to write your entire case for you, um, to write out like attacks, defenses, like everything you want, you can basically plan out ahead of time. And like in most cases, you'll have adequate enough time to, uh, to prepare for everything. Yeah, it's also important uh, to know that it's like uh, in, in speech rounds, you're more likely to be given the topic on the spot um, for and but for, for debate, you get it often like a month before and then you just have time to uh, prepare. Uh, and a lot of and a lot of the debate, like I say, like a lot of people say like 50 percent of the debate round is before round or is in preparation. Um, a lot of really good debaters, a lot of prepared debaters will literally have their speech written out um, or, or their, their rebuttal written out. There's a lot of common arguments that you often see repeating, repeating, especially if you go to a lot of tournaments. And it's really easy to not only create evidence against them, but also just have your entire like speech and extensions of your own case and basically just make it so that you're more efficient when talking. And that's often like something that you can definitely do. Um, especially as a novice, uh, I think one of the most effective strategies as a novice debater is to have your, your uh, speeches pre-written. So even if you don't exactly know what your opponent is talking about, if you can convincingly give your speech and basically just say what your case is about, since you obviously know what that's about, then it's often a very uh, effective strategy. Yeah, just send it um, whenever, whenever you want to either one of us. Not, not rich though. Not rich. Yeah, don't send it to him. Send it to, to us, to me and Aiden.
Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, hold on to your examples for now. Um, we'll, we can have like some people, like if anyone wants to present them out loud, they can do that first. But um, for everyone else who doesn't at the end of class, like, we'll just have you guys send them directly to us. You don't need to type them all in the chat because it becomes a lot more difficult to sort through everything then. Um, but yeah, just, just hang on to them for now and we'll address that in, I think about a bit. Okay, um, so that would be time. Um, I think we're gonna go on to, so, so hold on to your arguments. Uh, we're going to make you um, argue or create arguments against that, um, which is really important in, in general like debate of making sure that you can argue against your own positions. So Aiden is going to share a screen and I'm basically going to be talking about how to refute, uh, like common refutes against uh, your like uniqueness and uh, Lincoln impact. Oh wait, yeah. Um, everyone, I guess like we're we're going to scrap on the presenting thing for now. So just send all of your arguments to like send all of your uh, yeah, your created arguments to me so I can like share them on screen and Harvey will just go down and like give some common refutations to these kinds of arguments. Yeah, uh, we're going to, um, or I'm basically going to give you like, so there's, so there's like terms that you're supposed to use on specific, like, uh, or how to counter your your other arguments. Um, and we're just, we're just going to be going on to that. Um, obviously don't use these in like, I guess like, this is only probably contextual to debate. Um, for example, you're not going to say like non-unique in a real conversation, but it's just the general mindset of how you counter arguments of a standard uniqueness link and impact uh, type of debate. Okay, um, so I'm gonna just be, gonna be using uh, a standard example. Um, let's say, okay, um, Aiden, can you like write this down um, on like a Google doc or something? Sure. Okay, um, I guess I can, I can just uh, get started. Okay, so first let's just say the, uh, the argument is that Aiden is on a cliff right now. Um, the link would be the wind pushes Aiden off of a cliff. My internal link can probably be something about like, I don't know, Aiden is very high up on that cliff. Um, and the impact is that Aiden dies. So, um, so this is a standard like, like argument uh, structure. Uh, and so we just go on to responses. So the uniqueness of Aiden is on a cliff right now. So uh, there's two arguments here that you can generally use. So this is, can also be applied. Like we don't want to give you the exact answer, but this is like, um, so the first one is called a non-unique. So this is basically saying that the uniqueness has already occurred. Uh, so things like Aiden has already fallen. 
So would it make sense that, that it doesn't make like the, the link doesn't do anything. The wind doesn't do anything because Aiden has already fallen, right? The second one is that uniqueness overwhelms the link. This is a really important argument and a really underrated argument um, because it, it, it basically says that Aiden is too heavy to be blown off by the wind. So it means that no matter what your link is, no matter how strong the wind is, or no matter what you do um, in your status quo, you are not enough to solve for the current uniqueness. So when it's contextual to gun laws, it can be something like, um, like uh, for example, screening is not enough to solve for uh, like existing gun problems in the status quo. Uh, onto the link. So there's four responses generally on the link. Uh, so let's say the link is the wind pushes Aiden off a cliff. Uh, the first one is called a link turn. Um, it basically flips the link um, and it says that the wind is actually blowing the other way, saving aid. So it's even better for us. And this is a really like the strongest argument you can put on the link because it not only discredits what he said about like, let's say like the wind pushing in off cliff, but it also works for you because it's saying that you're actually better, right? It says that you're actually saving it and you're putting it the other way. The second argument is that is, is of a no link. So it basically says that the wind is non-existent, right? If you have some policy option, they say that, no, the policy action will not happen. Uh, screening will not happen because of this reason. Uh, the third argument that you can make is called a leak, link defense. So the wind is too weak to push, uh, to push Aiden off a cliff. And this basically is uh, worse than a no, than a no link, um, but a lot of people serve it as a, a link, like link defense is good for a, just like a final uh, argument that you make. If they don't overcome this link defense, then they basically don't win. And this can just be used for like really strong evidence cards that are like, this will never ever happen. Um, and it's very difficult to over, uh, overcome. Um, and the fourth one is called no link uniqueness. Um, and it's basically saying that something else that's not the affirmative or not the negative is going to push in off the cliff. And this is basically, uh, it's, it's very strong uh, to, because it gives an alternative of not only do they have to disprove um, that the alternative is going to push in off cliff, but they also have to prove that that they are going to push it. So it's they have to prove two things, and it's pretty uh, it's pretty strong. Um, the internal link is basically the same thing. Like all arguments that apply on the internal link, basically apply on the link turn. The internal link is basically a, a like a more specific link if you really want to think about it that way. Um, so on the impact of Aiden dying. So um, there's four arguments here as well. One is uh, no impact. So Aiden doesn't die. So there can be a number of reasons, but um, but usually, yeah. And then the second one is the impact turn. Now, impact turns are very, um, like, you got to be, like, uh, very careful using impact turns. Obviously, it's not good to impact turn, like, death. And they say, like, no, death is good. Um, or, like, if they have an impact of, of like, uh, rights of violations, you don't want to say that's good. Like, that's definitely not going to be um, good. But an ex example is Aiden dying is good, right? Three, uh, the third point is that there's no impact uniqueness. So um, you can, it bas this basically means that your impact is non-unique. Aiden is already dead. So it doesn't really, it doesn't matter what, what the link does because it, uh, because it already happened. Um, and the fourth one is the no impact uh, defense. So this basically says that Aiden dying doesn't matter. Um, and this is similar to link, uh, to link defense. It basically negates all type of offense. So even if the impact happens, it really doesn't matter. Like it doesn't really have that big of an effect. Um, and this is also like, you don't, you definitely don't want to discredit the, the deaths, for example, on this topic, uh, don't want to discredit deaths, but this is usually used in conjunction with um, some type of weighing. Um, and we'll be going on to weighing and uh, I think like in two days, but weighing is really strong when you have counteracting uh, uh, pieces of evidence um, and you want to see who actually wins, especially with uh, like a, a lot of you guys had frameworks of a utilitarianism or basically maximizing well-being, which is basically doing the greatest good for the greatest amount of people. So in this certain circumstance, you have to weigh between who does better for the greatest amount of people. Um, and the no impact defense is a very good for that. Um, and one important thing to note that when you guys are making your own like um, like, don't, like, you don't, you guys, obviously, like, this isn't homework, homework, but it is good for you guys, um, just generic argument, and if you want to do, if you want to get better at debate, um, but make sure you're not link turning and impact turning at the same time, um, because it often goes against you, because it says that, uh, for example, the wind pushes Aiden off a cliff, if you say the wind is blowing the other, uh, you say the wind is blowing the other way, saving Aiden, but you also say that, uh, you also say that Aiden dying is good, so you're basically preventing a good thing, so, um, that's probably like, it rarely happens, but when it does happen, it's really bad because in debate, you can't take back 
what you say. So things in, for example, if you get cross-examined, I don't know if you guys heard, like heard the, the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp thing. Um, if they do say something um, and they go back on their word, you can actually get into massive trouble with that. But it's also basically same thing with debate. Um, you can't really take back your words. So once you do have the impact turn and the link turn at the same time, your argument is basically gone. Like you can't refute that argument against it unless you have some other type of like, I don't know, defense onto it. Um, and that's basically uh, the responses onto uh, the case. Um, yeah, so I guess like the, let's go to our own example with the, uh, with the case. Let's see, let me share my screen on the, Okay. Uh, okay. So let's just talk. It's pretty com uh, like confusing, but let's just go through it uh, generically, so you guys have a basic idea of what 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 this uh, what happens. So uh, the uniqueness. Uh, so the non-unique would be that no, there are already background checks conducted by unlicensed cells in the United States. There already exists plenty. Now, obviously, with this, you have to have like adequate evidence, but um, this is basically what it means. The uniqueness overwhelms the link. Is that um, that sure having this like so. Our link is contextual to background checks, but there has to be a policy action enforcing background checks. So um, the argument about a uniqueness overwhelms the link is that the policy enacting background checks is not enough to solve for this current problem of background checks. So let's say that there's not there's no background checks because um, like certain politicians don't want it. Basically, what a uniqueness overwhelms the link is you're you're gonna have to have evidence that says that like this policy is not enough to overcome the politicians that are that are that don't want uh, background checks, and thus this will not happen or this will not solve this current issue. Um, the link turn. So um, it's it's probably not like good in this scenario, but saying like background checks actually make more people uh, with felony convictions um, from obtaining firearms, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's just contextual to the no link. So, uh, sorry, a link turn. So link turn here wouldn't really make a lot of sense, um, but it could be some external reason such as like, oh, uh, having policy, uh, having a background checks would also spur something else or for, uh, or having background checks would make people go to um, like illegal selling firearms or things like that, which would increase the amount of firearms. So that's a possible link turn that you can make. Um, the no link argument is basically like you just refute or like background checks don't really do anything people can hide their felony convictions or back or people aren't like or background checks are very lenient it's not going to impact that much um the link defense is probably something like uh background checks have never worked in the past they have they do not they do not uh like prevent people felony convictions uh, from obtaining firearms or they're going to get it some other way the no uh link uh, link uniqueness is probably it's most often used when you have another uh, alternative so let's say you're not for background checks you're for uh like uh you're for uh, having like a a license so you say background checks don't work license actually prevents it uh prevents people with felony conditions which means that you don't actually solve i solve better um and that way you not only have access like to their impact but you also discredit their link um the internal link is basically the same thing i don't think i need to go too much into it but i guess like for uh I don't think like the link turn also will not make a lot of sense, but the no links are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the impacts. So the impacts is that uh, that that mass shootings don't kill thousands per year. It's obviously very difficult to argue this. You probably will not have any evidence of this, but um, the the impact against it would be uh, or like the no no impact argument would be in that mass shootings don't don't kill any uh, thousands per year. The impact turn. Uh, do not do this. Like I repeat, do not do this, especially things like racism, um, sexism, things like men, uh, like like ableism. Do not turn this and say that it's it's good. Um, but that's just the example here. Um, and there, the no impact uniqueness is basically saying that. Also, don't, don't say this. A lot of these arguments are definitely really bad at contextual to this argument. But things like um, uh, there are like really clever climate change. Uh, arguments that are saying like climate change is actually good, or there's also uh, a, a nuclear war. We can get into that later if we, if we really wanted to, but I'll say that nuclear war doesn't kill thousands, but it sets people back into the stone age. And in stone age, we don't have access to the technology, so it doesn't lead to extinction. So that's a, it's a really uh, unique argument that you can basically turn um, like uh, nuclear war, but obviously you have to have uh, like defense to uh, it, like the impact. Um, so the no impact uniqueness is that the people are already dead or like people are already dead, which obviously doesn't make sense because there's, there's people living. There's, there's obviously going to be a future victim. So we don't do anything about this. The no impact, uh, uh defense, which obviously do not say this, but it's saying like these deaths do, do not matter. Um, so do not, you try to have the most like effective arguments, obviously don't put like really bad 
arguments against your own arguments, but things like uh, no links or things like a uh, link defense are pretty good uh, against like certain arguments. But that's uh, basically how that uh, that works. Um, and then I guess we can give you all time. I don't know if they if this program gives gives breaks, um, but you guys can have I guess we can make it homework. I mean, obviously, if you have other stuff to do, don't prioritize this class over the other or but um, with your written arguments, try to create the best counter arguments to your written arguments um, on here. Um, and if you if we want to, we can go over some of them that uh, we think are that we that we first see. Yeah. Okay. So everyone just I guess like use this time to send me your written arguments. Like um, you can just send it in the chat really quickly. Um, and just like just do it directly to me, so it doesn't I guess like it doesn't fill up the all chat. Um, but yeah, just just send them directly to me, and we'll go over a couple of good ones that we think. Or you can send them to Harvey. It it doesn't really. Oh, just to clarify, I don't mean like the counter arguments. I mean like the, the ones that we gave you like 10 minutes to do earlier. Just like, I guess like, um, yeah, just send them, send them to me really quickly and we'll just, we'll just go over something. Like Also, make sure that you have this structure of the uniqueness, link, and impact, um, because it is important that you guys are not having it in one whole paragraph, because you have to keep in mind that when you're actually researching your case and making arguments, you have to, uh, you have, to have evidence for it. So it's important to, disti to distinguish which ones are in which, one, uh, in, like, which category, because it just helps you better create evidence for it. Uh, there is going to be a separate class. Um, I believe there is um, another link that has been sent, but uh, it's going to be about the meta skills, which sounds pretty interesting. Okay, um, we'll go over one example. Um, so I don't know, if I'm, I'm just not gonna say your name in case you wanna stay anonymous. But uh, so the topic, uh, so the value would be safety. The criteria would be maximizing safety and security, which I think is uh, pretty good. Probably if you're, uh, so your impact is talking, I, um, since the impact is talking about like lives, um, it should probably be like morality and criterion of maximizing uh, human lives or, or maximizing well-being is probably better because safety does not entail life, but, um, but utilitarianism does. So you want to have it like pretty, pretty specific to lives specifically. And also safety is pretty vague. Like you, you want to prioritize lives over safety because safety, we don't really know what that entails. Um, okay, so the uniqueness is that there are no gun laws in the United States, which makes them, which cause many shootings. This is good. Um, this is a great uniqueness, uh, but there probably is some kind of gun laws, but they're just not that, that good. Uh, the link evidence is, is also pretty good. So they say that the, that since there are many people can legally own guns without, with any background checks, they can cause mass shootings. In some cases, it also cause accidental deaths. Um, so this is also good. Also, uh, this is, this is also so good. Uh, the internal link, if there are stricter laws, only qualified people will be able to get guns. So that's the increasing number of legal guns used without training. So no more shooting. So this is, um, this is interesting. I think this could probably be another link to another impact uh, because decreasing the number of illegal guns used could probably be its own like sub point, could be its own impact. Um, the internal link would probably be something around like uh, uh, something about illegally guns are specifically used to um, like or like illegal, illegally used guns are historically known to be part of these um, uh, mass shootings. Uh, and the impact is also good. Uh, shootings promote violence and kill innocent 
um, civilians. So I think this is a great uh, structure and it's, it's very good. Um, let's see another one. So uh, the value would be morality criteria be maximizing well-being. Um, so the topic would be mandatory mental health programs. Um, so before going into this, actually, there is some kind of like, uh, the topic will stay consistent, but the independent arguments that you guys will make will be contextual to something specific that solves for it. So obviously with any given topic, there's multiple outs and multiple ways to go around it. Um, so the topic will not specifically be about mental health, but this is a good topic. So uniqueness without mental health screening, multiple people will go unchecked with schizophrenia. So uniqueness will typically be about the status quo. So you can say that there's not a lot of mental health screening right now. This argument that you make is more like a link like, like a schizophrenia, and that schizophrenia could be an internal link into something, their impact. Um, the next link, uh, also, like, don't let me hold you. If you guys have something else to do, you can go. But the person that's specifically talking about health, I recommend you stay. Uh, the link would be with mandatory mental health programs, doctors able to diagnose people faster and, tech, and, and save more lives. Um, this is pretty good, but it doesn't really have, um, like, it's not specifically contextual to, uh, like, mass shootings. Um, but so you want to have like a internal link that specifically says that a lot of a lot of these people, all of these mass murderers have struggling with mental health capabilities um, and impact is going unchecked mass murders with mental illnesses will be more prevalent. That's that's pretty good. But you want wants to also um, relate it to life. OK, um, I'm out of time. Let's 